Welcome back to The Breakfast, and uh, it's time for Off the Press, uh, where we have a quick review of stories making headlines across the country uh, this morning. We're going to be joined uh, on the Off the Press this morning by uh, Demola Kingbola, the uh, public, or rather publisher of the Podium Media. Thank you so much for joining us uh, this morning, sir. It's my pleasure. Good morning. You're welcome. And uh, we're kicking off this morning with stories from the Guardian newspapers and seeing how many of them we can quickly get to share and, um, you know, share with you, of course, uh, as many of the papers that we can also bring in this morning, we will. Uh, the first story here says unemployment spikes as manufacturing outlook uh, dims. It also says here, NNPC allays fears as for scarcity surfaces in Abuja and other places. Senate panel suspends budget session over attacks. Six policemen and four civilians killed in Lagos' bloody week of violence. And 13 die in Kaduna Kano road accident. Um, also uh, this morning, um, with regards to the unemployment story, it says here, experts uh, predict 50% unemployment rate rise. Should be scary. Manufacturers lament looted warehouses and also expect longer recession, economist warns. Uh, the federal government is also in the news this morning saying the national carrier will take off in 2021, and that is from the federal government. Uh, the project accommodated in 78.96 billion naira aviation capital budget. These are the lead stories on the Guardian newspapers this morning. Demola Kingbola, over to you. Thank you so much. Um, let's start with the story on on. Uh, or the unemployment rate, that shouldn't come as a surprise to anybody anyway. Uh, even before COVID-19 started, the Nigerian economy had been suffering some signs of illness. Unemployment has really, really, really gone up simply because the productive capacity of the economy has been weakened over the years. Manufacturers don't have access to credit. Uh, there's weak consumer demand, there's inflation. So, of course, a lot of companies had laid off staff even before COVID-19 came. So COVID-19 came, and it's a global phenomenon. Almost all the countries have felt the impact. So Nigeria is not an exception, uh, but simply because we were already in a recession before COVID-19, we are probably feeling the impact more. So definitely, uh, the, the, the experts are right that the figure may even rise up to 50% unemployment. Don't forget also that in the last two weeks, a lot of companies have been looted, have been vandalized. That is going to also have an impact on the rate of unemployment. But unfortunately, government is not even doing the right thing. They're busy throwing money. You don't throw money at basic economic problems. You come up with policies, you come up with long-term solutions. Okay, this fund, that fund, at the end of the day, the beneficiaries may not even be able to access those funds. What we need is a national policy on industrialization on employment that will keep the youth busy, that will make sure that every employable adult is able to work. That's what we need to do. What we need to do. And of course, we need to focus on our small and medium scale enterprises. That is the engine of growth for any economy. Unfortunately, those, that sector has been cannibalized, has been, has been marginalized. So there are people, so a lot of companies in those areas, they are really, really struggling. So yeah, the, 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 the chicken has come to roost. Years of planlessness, years of wastage, years of plundering the economy of the country has led to this unemployment rate. So I really don't think that um, it's something that will go away on time. Quickly also talk about the um, programs that the government has put in place in the last few years. Uh, the trade and money yeah. and the likes. Um, even a few days ago, there was also yeah. talk of uh, 20,000 Naira being given as uh, loans or grants uh, mm -hmm. to women yeah, to you know, lift them out of poverty. Yeah. The government also has a 10-year plan to lift 100 million Nigerians out of poverty. Do, do, do you have any yeah. faith in the success of these programs um, in any way? One we do not even have the capacity to monitor the implementation of these programs. We do not have the sincerity or purpose to even monitor. Are we sure these funds are being used for the purpose for which they were established? Then a lot of people that you are giving money to, they are not into any productive activity. 
people collect this money, they just travel to Canada, okay? The bulk of beneficiaries of all these government interventions, they collect the money, most of them don't do anything tangible with it, all right? Because we, do, we lack accurate record keeping, we do not have a database of the real entrepreneurs in Nigeria. So anybody who turns up to say, look, I'm an entrepreneur, I need money, collect money. I doesn't do anything with the money. So throwing money at economic problem is a panic reaction which has never worked and it will never work. It's just money down the drain. Because by now, given the way that money has been shared by government, we should begin to see the impact. We should begin to see the effect. But look at the riots, look at the looting. It shows that there's a big problem among the youth in Nigeria. So my question is, who exactly is benefiting from all this money government is sharing all over the place? Do you think the government, do you think the government will the accept that its okay. programs so we need failed. to have a, a coordinated approach towards giving money. In developed countries, they don't just give people money. You must show proof of having a business well registered, you have a bank account, and evidence that you are really in operation before you get the money. We are not doing that in Nigeria. Do you think the okay. government will that's accept that some of these yeah. programs yeah. failed, Mr. Kingbola? Do you think the government will accept that some of these programs have failed or haven't done as well as they had expected and have a rethink? Oh, of course. The government will never accept that, but the results are there. Okay, when you provide intervention funds like this, within six months or one year, you should begin to see results. When you're not seeing results, it that means you, you, that means you failed. Because most of these are not well thought out. They were not really in a coordinated approach. Okay, so we, are, we, we keep throwing money at economic problems. The money goes to the wrong people. Even the people who get the money, they have other challenges. Managing a business goes beyond capital. Okay, you're giving someone money to run a business, there's no electricity, there's no safety, there's no security. So there has to be an integrated approach. It's not just money. So you so you 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 get the money which is meant to be working capital. You end up using the money on other things. At the end of the day, you don't even have enough left to produce. And All when right. you don't produce, you don't have. That's why the foreign exchange market is so volatile. Okay, right. because we're not producing to hand for the uh, uh, exchange. All right. Quick, okay? Quickly and share your thoughts. The strength of a nation's currency is, is, is it depends on its productive ability. If you produce for export and foreign exchange, we are not producing for export. We rely on oil. A lot right. of people, we are an import dependent nation. We consume quite a lot. Everything is imported in Nigeria because the local industries, they are comatose. Okay. They've all gone on the Qu Quickly also share your thoughts on the uh, fears of uh, petrol scarcity. It's also one of the stories on The Guardian this morning, as quickly as possible. I, I'm sure that's, that's not going to happen. I mean, between now, they said in two weeks' time, okay, I'm, I'm very hopeful that government will not allow that to happen because considering what we have just gone through, if you allow any disruption to businesses and lives again, you can be sure you will find people on the streets again. Okay, the Nigerians have suffered enough. Fuel scarcity is the last thing any sensible government will want to allow to happen. So I'm very hopeful that something will be done before then. I'm, I'm quite very hopeful. It should be so unfortunate if government allows that to happen. Okay, all right. Uh, now let's move over to uh, uh, stories from the Nigerian Tribune this morning. There's a few of them that we can also quickly share. Um, he says here, reps warn as federal government insists on regulation of social media. Um, how SARS um, detained me for 48 days, remove my okay. teeth, Victim tells Lagos panel. I'm looking forward to more revelations from the panel of inquiry. There's so much that I believe that we will get to hear uh, from these victims yeah. as they step forward. But, um, of course, more stories on the Tribune. Army says no massacre in Leki. That's one of the stories. Uh, President Buhari renominates Yakubu as INEC chairman. Reps one as federal government insist on regulation of social media. I already spoke on that. And then all your residents lodge 46 complaints in nine days. 3,000 cases suffer setback as hoodlums cut away exhibits in Delta. 
And uh, NYSC camp in Abuja invaded. That's also on the Nigerian Tribune this morning. Uh, Ms. Akimbola, I'm going to start with the panel of inquiry, of course. I, I want to see your thoughts on that one. 48 days in okay. SARS custody. He lost his uh, teeth. Um, of course, a while he was accused of uh, theft. I believe that's, that's, that's a story. L let's start yeah. with that um, yeah. this morning. Okay. It, it's, it's yet another uh, gory revelation on, on, on the brutality and the bestiality of Nigerian police. When you talk about SARS, people often think that SARS is a special section in Nigerian police. SARS is made up of Nigerian police officers. Okay, so even if we disband SARS, the canker one is still there in Nigerian police. The, the mentality of the average Nigerian policeman is to use brutal force in any situation. So this is quite unfortunate, and I believe that this is just one of numerous stories of 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 of, um, uh, of unlawful arrest, detention, and 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 um, and um, severe punishment being meted out to innocent citizens. And I want to believe that the officers that were recommended for trial, the trial should go the whole hog and they should be punished. Probably that will serve as a deterrent to others. And individuals also should learn to sue. I know it takes a long time in Nigeria to get justice, but let people con let, 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 let people um, learn to sue the Nigerian police. Because definitely you can't take the law into your hands. So it's really unfortunate. And I know that we're going to, in the days ahead, a lot of revelations will come uh, into the public space on, 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 on how SARS has really brutalized and humiliated a lot of Nigerians. It's quite, it's quite unfortunate. Do you also see um, an easy process of identifying the perpetrators of these acts and bringing them justice? Do you think that would happen uh, seamlessly um, with the way our criminal justice um, uh, laws are set up? No, 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 no. It's, it's, not, it's not going to happen easily because, for one, the Nigerian police will even try to protect its own, okay? Only a few officers with very bad cases will end up being recommended for prosecution. Probably one-tenth. There are a lot of them there who do these things every day, so probably one-tenth of them will get caught and will get prosecuted. And even if we are serious as a country, such cases should have accelerated hearing and justice should be dispensed as soon as possible. This is not a case I should drag for years, really. If we really want to um, send a very strong message out there to the Nigerian police officers, yeah. Okay, and, and also one of the stories on the Tribune this morning is the uh, thoughts on regulation of social media. Let's also hear your thoughts on that one. It says, uh, reps warn as federal yeah. government insists on regulation of social media. Yeah, the, 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 that, the, that policy is dead on arrival, and it, it, it's so sad, it's pathetic that at this time, uh, government is, is dissipating energy and resources, pursuing an evil agenda against Nigerian people. It's not going to work. It's not going to work, one, because government even lacks the capacity, lacks the technology to, to even monitor the use of social media in Nigeria. Okay? The minister comparing Nigeria with China, it, 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 it's not just, he it doesn't know what he's talking about. China has been a communist country all over the years, and so it's okay for China to do that. But Nigeria is a democratic republic. And I, and I really do not know what the problem is. Social media, for me, has been a blessing to Nigeria. Yes, there's the minutes of fake news, okay? But at the same time, it's, it's everywhere. So government should, should spend its time and energy coming up with public relations policies that will help the image of Nigeria, that, 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 that will build a better reputation for Nigeria, not chasing shadow. This is dead on arrival. And it, 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 it's, it's a symptom of a government that lacks focus. It's the manifestation of the, Syrian, of the seriousness of this administration. And of course, what do you, what, what do you expect when you have someone like, 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 like Mr. Lai Mohammed as Minister of Information? No new ideas, no breakthrough policies, They're just there to chase the shadow. So social media bill is the least of our problem in Nigeria today. It's the least of our I, I agree that something should be done about fake news, but you cannot now begin to monitor or control it, okay? Something needs to be done, great, but it, 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 even government itself will end up being hacked yes. with the way those guys are set up. Okay. Government itself, will, will, the government website will be hacked. 
So we, we need to just find a more reasonable approach towards managing the business of fake news. All right. Let, let, let me now also bring in something else, you know, that uh, made a lot of headlines yesterday and uh, got a lot of people yeah. talking. And that is the Nigerian army, first of all, saying uh, that uh, protesters oh, yeah. uh, were in shot at the Lekki toll gate and there was no massacre in Lekki. Um, but another thing that uh, they also said was that the Lagos state governor uh, was the one who, yeah. uh, of course, invited the military after the curfew, the 24 hour curfew was imposed. How um, does this yeah. you know, come across to you? Um, after, the, of course, the state governor had repeatedly said he wasn't in control of the military and um, um, he's not sure yeah. exactly how things played out on the 20th of October. Yeah, something is definitely not happening up here. There's, there's still a lot that we need to know about what happened on October 20. Don't forget that immediately this, this event happened, the army denied ever sending its officers to the scene of the, of, of the incident. It denied that no, we didn't deploy our troops. But the governor said he too did not ask the soldier, I mean, he didn't ask the army to intervene. And probably he said what happened was beyond his control. Okay. On CNN, the governor said he had evidence based on the CCTV footage that the army deployed its, its officers. The army has come out to say it was based on your invitation. So we need to see the evidence. I want to believe that the army would have acted only on a verbal request of Mr. Governor. That would have probably been a letter. So let us see the request. Because I read the statement that the army issued and they said due process was followed after they received the request. So let us see evidence of the due process. There must have been a request a formal one from the Lagos State government, and we want to see. We really need to get to the root of this because it, it, it's messy, it's shameful that this buck passing is taking place. Lives have been lost. Look, whether it is massacre or shooting, the fact remains that we lost a lot of people that we have not even fully accounted for. Okay, so let's assume that there was no massacre, but there was shooting. And even if Lagos State government said, come and intervene, did they ask you to come and shoot people? Okay, so these are issues that hopefully the, the, the Lagos State, um, the judicial panel set by Lagos State government should be able to unravel as time, as time goes on. But suffice to say that it's the shame of a nation that we opted now, today is 28, eight days after, we are not able to establish how the soldiers arrived at Lekki Togi. It's, it's, it's shameful. Yeah. Right, uh, shameful. hopefully. In the coming days, we would also get to look at the implication of some of these things. Um, if um, it is true yeah. that it is, it is the state governor who invited the army, you know, what are the implications yeah. um, and the back and forth. But let, let's yeah. now see what we have on the Punch exactly. newspapers this morning. Um, there's a story that I've also gotten to see on the Punch this morning. It says, outrage over IG's failure to stop looting cops Sean Adamu's yeah. order. Also, Niger, Bene and Togo pay Nigeria 2.04 billion uh, Naira electricity bill. A new airport's plan for Ikiti, Anambra, Benue, and others, says the federal government. Uh, of course, um, I guess it's congratulations to Professor Mahmoud Yakubu as he's reappointed as INEC chairman. Volume of beneficiaries responsible for staggered palliatives distribution, says uh, Kakovid. Uh, one or two others that we can share. Manufacturing sector hits sixth month slow growth. Reps caution the federal yeah. government over insistence on anti social media bill. And uh, Governor Somolu sounds tough over inter tribal clashes and violence in Lagos. Uh, Lekki shootings. Evans ex lawyer sues Buhari Buratai demands 10 billion for um, uh, victims. Um, all right, uh, hoodlums harass Lagos Abuja residents as police fail to return to streets. So I'm going to start with that. Um, the lead story there saying that uh, police officers shone the orders of uh, the IG of police, uh, Adamu. Um, and of course, uh, it also is saying that there is more of the violence being perpetrated in certain cities because of the absence of security agents. What is going on, Mr. Kingbola? 
don't let us forget that Nigerian policemen are part of the society. They are part of the DK, okay? They are also at the receiving end of this economic problem that everybody's complaining about. They are human beings, okay? It gets to a stage that policemen will drop their guns and run away. That is the power of a mass revolution, a mass movement. So one, the policemen, they've realized that, look, we cannot even cope. We, we can't um, control this crowd, okay? Yes, it's okay for the IG to ask them to go onto the street. One, are they fully equipped? Do they have everything they need? And considering what has happened in the last two weeks, no policeman wants to be caught shooting. Okay, two policemen were roasted live in a battle last week because they killed someone. So the policemen are careful. And don't forget that this whole thing started with NSAS, and later people are calling for a reformation of Nigerian police force. Who is going to benefit from these reforms? The policemen themselves. So unwittingly, unwittingly, they are also supporting all these protests because they are happy. Don't let us deceive ourselves. The policemen are happy at what is going on. They are happy because at the end of the day, they also look forward to a new Nigeria, they look forward to a new, uh, better organized Nigerian police force. So in a way, internally, they are happy, but also they are incapacitated. They don't have the resources. Also, they don't have vehicles. They don't have enough equipment to even fight these people. And how many people are you going to shoot, really? How many people are you going to shoot? You shoot one person, others swoop on you, and you are dead. Okay? So it, it, it's, there's a moral crisis. There's a moral dimension to the issue of asking policemen to go and confront uh, um, protesters. Okay? So they, 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 they are also limited in terms of the, the, the moral authority that they have Mr. and the equipment that they have to even fight. Mr. Kim, well, I, I, want, I want to know... Um, what we must learn from all of this um, as we move forward, you know, when uh, calm returns across the country, what are the things that you feel we must learn? Um, and of course, maybe have a re, um, maybe re strategize with regards um, our ideas and our policies with regards to policing. We've seen, obviously, in the last few weeks that the Nigerian police force um, doesn't have a lot of training with regards to de-escalating crisis uh, situation and tense situations. There's zero training. Um, they most times resort to using you know, live ammunition. Um, we've also gotten to see that with the, the idea of um, having anti-riot police almost doesn't exist. Um, so what are the things that you feel we must learn moving forward from all of this? At the, at the root of all this is the need for government to begin to take care of the people. That is the foundation. The government needs to be more empathetic. The government needs to be more supportive. The government needs to be more protective of the people. That is at the root of all this. Secondly, Nigerian police needs to be reformed. That's what we're talking about. We need to review the recruitment policy, a system whereby anybody, just anybody is allowed to join the police force, that system will always breed anarchy, it will always breed terror, it will breed and produce the kind of policemen in SARS that we have all been condemning. So recruitment to police force needs to be reviewed. Also, adequate training, okay? I, 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 I was really um, scandalized, reading the chief of army staff saying that it was when he became a general that he traveled out of Nigeria for the first time. That is shameful. And probably that is part of the problem that we are having, lack of exposure, okay? For someone of his caliber not to have gone on a lot of foreign training speaks volume of the way and manner we have been managing the armed forces, all right? So, better training for the general police force, motivation and welfare. Police barracks should be overhauled. Anybody living in such um, decrepit condition cannot expect to, to, to do his or her job in a sensible manner. Go and look at police barracks. Go and look at the kind of life they're living there. Okay, so you won't blame them when you see them misbehaving. We need to take care of them. Okay? We need to be in increasing their salary. There should be incentives. Okay, there should, there should be better policies that will help them to do their job better. All of these things should come together to help us to have a better Nigerian society, a better Nigerian police force. 
So it, it is not just about the IG ordering them to go and stop protests, go and stop riots. What have you done to motivate and encourage them? A lot of policemen in Lagos last week were seen removing their uniforms, keeping them in the back and wearing mufti. Nobody, nobody is proud. The average policeman in Nigeria today is not proud to be a policeman. So what are we talking about? So a lot still needs to be done. And right. if I were the president of the council, by now, the IGP should have been fired. The minister of police affairs should have been fired. Because you, you cannot reform the Nigerian police force and the sitting IG is still there. What are you reforming? The reform okay. should start from the top. It should start from the top, and it should go like all the way that. down. We need to bring in fresh and fresh people in the general police force, and people with a better mindset, people with a better orientation, and a higher level of education and exposure. Thank all you right? very much. So, last thing needs to be done in that area. Demola Kimbola, publisher of uh, Podium Media. Thank you so much for speaking with us. Pretty interesting uh, a conversation I've had with you this morning. Um, remember to stay safe. Thanks once again. Thanks so much. And that's a wrap on uh, The Breakfast. As always, your comments and observations are welcome via all our communication channels showing on your screen. We'll be back with more same time tomorrow here on PLOS TV Africa. Thank you for watching.